quick turnaround Saturday coming in here on a Tuesday night in the non-conference, but BC just kind of needs to string together some wins here. Yes, and I think the big reason for their win on Saturday was the consistency factor. They had struggled putting a full 40 minutes together, and they finally were able to put consistency, and that came with the effort on the defensive end that really turned into their strong offensive performance. Yeah, they started off really well early on in that game. Did Boston College, winning by one at Notre Dame. Albany coming off a one-point loss to Bucknell in a game that Will Brown really felt like his team could have won. Thought they did some things to give that game away. First time he felt like all year that the turnovers were really a factor. Yep, and they were up by as many as 12 points in that game versus Bucknell. And just that they really thought they gave it away. Just too many turnovers, especially for a team who really prides itself on taking care of the basketball. Yeah, they turned it over 12 times in the first half, 21 total for the game. For Boston College, once again, you just saw C.J. Felder in the starting lineup with the injury to Nick Popovich for the second year in a row. These are two banged up teams, uh, really on both sides. For Albany, they've been with different times. They've been without five scholarship players, four scholarship players. We think they're gonna have a few guys back today. And then on the Boston College side, once again, Popovich is out today. Winston Tabs is out for the season. So both teams a little short-handed on this Tuesday night here in December at Conti Forum. First ever meeting between these two teams, and ball was dropped on the ground by Trey Hutchison the first year. And then out of bounds, possession will go to the Eagles. For Albany on the offensive end, they just have to find a way to get some points. It's really been all about Clark and Healy. Coach Brown, we spoke to him yesterday, and he talked about we're just a little bit struggling to score sometimes. We're putting too much pressure on our two key guys. Clark and Healy are the only two players who've practiced in every practice so far this season, so it's been tough getting into a rhythm, but they need someone else to really step up in this game. C.J. Felder, three-pointer off the mark. It's four of 17 from behind the arc for Felder, driving the lane, Ahmad Clark, and it's no good. Clark, who started to Matha outside of Washington in high school, one year of JUCO before coming to Albany. Derek Thornton, the transfer, off the mark on the jumper, and then a foul on the rebound try with Stefan Mitchell, unsurprisingly coming down with the rebound. He's the Eagles' leading rebounder for a third year in a row. And the Eagles are without their big man and Nick Popovich, the senior, who's out indefinitely. And C.J. Felder gaining that first start of his freshman campaign against Notre Dame on Saturday. Came in with big minutes. Derek Thornton, left hand. Got caught, guarded against Ahmad Clark, who Coach Brown really liked the way he's improved his defense, the senior from Bowie, Maryland. Albany comes in averaging 67 points a game. It's really all about the three-point shot. Antonio Rizzuto, the sophomore, was off the mark. He struggled with that shot this year. Mitchell, you know, out of bounds, it will stay here with Boston College. These Great Danes, the one thing that Coach Brown was surprised by outside of the injuries is just how they've struggled to shoot the ball from the outside. Here are some of the numbers, and you see the year-over-year -year comparison. Yep, and Rizzuto is a player that Coach Brown really believes could be that extra scoring threat that they need to be able to win out these games. But he's going through a little bit of a shooting slump, has had games where he's shot over 75%, but, but they need his consistency there as Mitchell hits a three. Stefan from the outside, his fourth made three-pointer of the season, and the first points of the game for Boston College after starting 0 for 4 from the floor. And he's a player that's known for really building up that stat sheet, doing the intangibles, the things, the extra effort points is Keith with the rebound, but he's really found some confidence in his shot, and that's something that really has helped the Eagles. Kind of the next step, Hamilton, three-pointer good, and the Eagles have two from the outside. Jarius Hamilton, who missed five games in the middle of the season after the opener, has come back averaging eight points a game in his last four since his return, and he's got an early triple to make it six nothing. And during that four game losing streak for the Eagles, they really struggled shooting the ball from behind the arc. They were shooting close to 30%, but in that game versus Notre Dame on Saturday, they shot close to 60% in that first half as Rizzuto hits one. Yeah, there's the sophomore. You mentioned kind of, you know, the number is 29% from the year from three. He went five of seven from American. So outside of that game, it's around 20% for someone that Albany really felt like could be a good shooter, but 
any time. You were a former shooter, you know this. You just gotta keep shooting. Yep, you just have to have the confidence to keep shooting and it'll come back. Hamilton inside, a little bit strong. Important to have Jarius Hamilton back and playing well for Boston College, the former four-star recruit coming in last year. And there is Amon Clark getting to the bucket for the first basket of the game for you, Albany. Clark, who came in after his junior college year, playing a year behind a couple of players in front of him, really took a big step from about four points a game two years ago to 16 last year. Thornton no good from three. Eagles are two of eight from the floor to start. Foul called with Felder reaching in on Rizzuto. He's had the ball in his hand a lot. I touched a little bit on the effect that Mitchell has on the game, but his ability to have that confidence in that three-point shot is going to be crucial for the Eagles. And then Clark on the opposite end, just taking advantage of the Eagles not getting back in transition defense. That's where you Albany really feels like whenever there's a mismatch, they have to take advantage of it because of some of the struggles to score here recently. Foul on the inbound attempt. They called a technical foul against the Albany bench. So an early tech goes against Will Brown, the head coach of Albany, and Julian Rishwain, who just comes into the game, will get free throws here. Certainly early for technical foul call. Rishwain knocks down the first, the freshman from Sherman Oaks, California. Big performance in a career high with 15 against DePaul a couple of weeks ago. One of two at the line for Rishwain. One area the Eagles have really struggled this season, especially in their game on Saturday, has been from the free throw line. They only shot four free throws against Notre Dame, missed two front ends of a one-on-one. -on -one. But in those close games, you realize how crucial just those extra points are. Already got to the line a lot earlier than they did against Notre Dame. For the third time since 1996, the Eagles have just four Free throw attempts for the game. Inside, left hand is good. Brent Hank, one of three Australians on this U Albany team, ties it at seven. Whistle out of bounds. It'll go to U Albany when we come back. All time. Guy, we'd like to take a moment to. Bucket challenge to bring awareness and. and funding to research about ALS, more than $220 million. Uh, we're certainly thinking of his wife, Julie, his daughter, Lucy, his parents, John and Nancy, who have been around the BC community, around the regional community, doing so much, and uh, certainly thinking about people of plenty more as we go through our show today about Pete Frady's and his loss today, but certainly uh, that is top of mind as we then turn from there to the game, and I'll be going to the free throw line. I was going into my senior season when Pete Frades was uh, diagnosed with ALS and I went to well, one of the student athletes who went to church every every Wednesday for the student athlete mass and Pete Frades was without doubt there every Wednesday and just to see the courage and, and strength that he put forth in a really tough di diagnosis yeah. uh, I mean it's our halftime show. A couple of free throws from Cam Healy, who's as good as anyone in the country, shooting 94% from the free throw line. So a 9-7 lead for Albany here at Conti Forum. Albany three of its last three from the floor. Mitchell off of a good feed. Five points for Mitchell. First assist for Derek Thornton, who came in ranked ninth in the conference in assists. That was a great job by Thornton, just recognizing that mismatch and Mitchell inside with the easy two. Tie game early on between these two. Healy thought about a jumper around Mitchell, got good coverage and the kick out for Hutchison, bouncing out. As Jarius Hamilton crashing out defensively on Hutchison. Again, Albany's gonna take him from behind the arc. We certainly know that. Here, an offensive foul goes against the Eagles as Derek Thornton picks up his first. 
This was a great job by Thornton using that screen and just recognizing the opening inside. And Mitchell, who is not known for his scoring ability, known really for all the extra work he puts in, but he's done a great job of really stepping up when they needed points. He has five points to lead all scores early. There's a turnover and a foul. That's something Albany really trying to limit after their last game. Like I said, he just does a great job of just giving the Eagles extra possessions by his toughness and his effort on the defensive end. First foul goes against Brent Hank there. Mitchell comes in 12th in the conference and steals. He's also fourth in the conference. His team has confidence in his shot. No, he just has to has the, have that same confidence as Rishwain. Three-pointer for four points for Julian Rishwain, the freshman. Hit four threes against DePaul. He's proven that he can come off the bench and make some shots from the outside. Bucket good to answer. Ahmad Clark immediately ties it at 12. It's big buckets for Clark, something that Coach Brown talked about with us this week. He knows he can shoot the ball from three, but because the offense has been such a focal point through Clark and Healy, sometimes he's the one who has to take bad shots, knock the percentage down. Here is a second offensive foul called against Boston College in a short spurt, both against Derek Thornton, and that's two early fouls for Thornton for an Eagles team that's shorthanded without Nick Popovich today. And the senior is out indefinitely, but it, they miss his inside presence, especially on the defensive end. He became a thousand point scorer this season, but has been having back issues, and I know they hope for a quick return for him. It's so hard to figure out when it's a back, and you know, so many people deal with it, and especially as a big, it becomes a bit of an issue, and hopefully, Pop will be able to come back soon and be okay. Wiping some precipitation off the floor here. Second foul on Thornton, so he comes out, as does Jerry's Hamilton. And, and that's a spot where on that offensive foul, Thornton's still working on that part of his game yeah. to try to decide when to be really aggressive, when to hold up, especially already playing on a foul. Yep, and especially after coming off of one of the best games by any guard in the ACC on Saturday, went nine for 12 from the field, had those four assists, but he's also leading the ACC in turnovers per game with four. And, they just need a little bit more consistency on that end from the point guard. Malachi D'Souza came back against Bucknell for the first time in a while is in. Here's Hamilton with the steal and the finish. First points for Jared Hamilton coming off 13 in a season high against Notre Dame. The Eagles now have six points off of U Albany's four turnovers, and that's something that really was an effective stat off of those four losses that they had, they only had 10 points of off their opponent's turnovers, whereas their first four games, they had over 21 points. So being able to actually convert points from those turnovers are going to be key to the Eagles' success. Kendall Lauderdale with his first two to retie the game. Mitchell inside, lost the handle, got it back. As it cycles around. Both teams shooting well right now. Heath on a rainbow. Couldn't find it. And Ahmad Clark running out for Albany in transition. And the bounce pass skipped away from Adam Luca. Luca, who, when we talked to Coach Brown yesterday, wasn't sure he was going to be playing, but he is in now. So this is as healthy as Albany's been in a long time. Yeah. We see Hamilton with a great defensive effort and converts for two. Averaging just over a steal a game. Talk to even some NBA scouts who are in the building. They really like Jared Hamilton's ability to play defense, along with some of the scoring of late that you just saw. Three-pointer, good. Antonio Rizzuto has two from the outside, and Albany leads by three. got to be a really welcome sight for Coach Brown to see a three-point shooter that he is relying on come to life a little bit early. Hamilton to match. Another Albany rebound to Adam Luca, the sophomore from Sydney, Australia. Long three, Clark. Rush that one a little bit. And another Luca, Luka Kronjevic for Boston College on the rebound. Felder inside. 
And this one goes the other way. So foul called before the shot went up. You all the eight ball when we come back as the Danes up three. You're so annoying. Get off me. Hey, girls, please, can you come on? Because Will Brown talked about that they have struggled from the three-point line as of late, but they have not shown that today as Rizzuto has already hit two for three. But I'll tell you one thing, the Eagles cannot allow for U Albany to get hot. This is a team that comes off a season where they set single season records on most three-point attempts and made, and that was led by their now sophomore class. Yeah, no doubt. And for an Albany team that struggled to find points, the great equalizer as Felder with a nice take to the bucket for his first two. C.J. Felder in his second career start, filling in for the injured Nick Popovich. Just to finish on Albany, I mean, mid-major versus ACC, as Coach Brown said, the great equalizer is the three-point yep. shot. And he knew they would not be able to stay in this game if wow. they were not able to make their shots, but they're not having trouble here tonight. That is a quick eight points for Healy. Two three-pointers already. And a 20 to 16 lead. U Albany has made five of its last six from the floor. Chris Heron in the game for Boston College for the first time. Here is Felder, a little bit short on the three. And Cameron Healy, whose rebounding numbers are also up this year, averaging five a game, has one in the backcourt. Trying another quick one. Why not? A little bit short. Offensive rebound. Lauderdale bounced down to Luca, who's fouled from behind. Albany's having their opportunities on the offensive end. And the sophomore with a pretty shot, but he's made at least one three in 42 straight games. Just to kind of show you where Albany has been offensively versus right now, they haven't made more than five threes and a half, even though you just set the numbers from last year. They're very much a three-point shooting team. But they're already at four today, and we still have 10 minutes left in this first half. Mitchell and Hamilton back in for Boston College. Rizzuto back into the game for U Albany. And I think with U Albany being able to play some more bodies, they're going to be able to get some more rest for their shooters, and I think that'll just help increase their percentage from the three-point line. That foul was the second, by the way, on C.J. Felder. So two on Felder, two on Thornton on the Boston College side. And now Jarius Hamilton going to the line for B.C. This was a great look in by Mitchell, and Hamilton goes up strong. Now a chance for two. First foul on Malachi D'Souza. Jarius Hamilton, the sophomore, four-star recruit coming out, coming into Chestnut Hill last year. As we said, scored two points in the opener against Wake Forest, missed five games in a row, but since that point, he's averaging eight points a game over his last four. He's really, we've seen it in times and spurts, but there's a ceiling here with Jarius Hamilton that still is in there to be developed early on in his sophomore season. A couple of free throws made by Jarius Hamilton. And he had missed five games this season with an injury, so really taking him out of that momentum. So he's still trying to just get that consistency back. But the quarters, we see the first double team. Held ball, so it's a jump ball call. It gives possession to Boston College. Good effort by the BC youngster and Jay Heath. Jay Heath is a, only a freshman, has proved how great of an offensive threat he can be. But his real value also comes from the defensive end and his ability to just create those kind of turnovers. Out of Washington, D.C., fourth nationally among freshmen in three-point percentage, shooting 50% from the arc. Jarius Hamilton off the feet from Heath. And the offensive rebound off of two B.C. bodies. In this case, two equals none. You Albany ball. Jim Christian's team is sixth season at the helm of Boston College for Coach Christian. Tried to change the mindset a little bit this year. Spent some time in the offseason at Texas Tech after Chris Beard led his team to the Final Four a year ago. And 
just kind of went with the mindset, let's not limit ourselves. Let's say, why not us? Why not have the ceiling? Everybody else is going for it and try to put the pieces together from there. They got a steal and Hamilton Ooh. to the bucket. Four for Jared Hamilton, the senior. Once again, that comes from the defensive effort for making all you Albany force those turnovers and then being able to execute off. It's a great finish by Hamilton. He's shooting over 50% from the floor in the last seven games. Clark makes a move, gets to the bucket. Ahmad Clark showing off. Seven points for the senior Clark. Albany reestablishing a five-point lead. Back to three as Hamilton goes up for six points. Both teams shooting the ball pretty well right now. Albany at 57%. The Eagles 42% from the floor. D'Souza, second game back from injury. Played about 12 minutes against Bucknell. They were hoping for a little bit more. You can see that right brace on his right knee. A lot of touches for Hamilton. And here it's a blocking foul. Which sends Jarius Hamilton, the sophomore, to the line. Once again, Mitchell, just with those hustle plays, gets it out. Great lay in by Heath and Hamilton with a great finish. You mentioned points off turnovers. It's already eight for Boston College today. In that losing streak, the Eagles are only averaging 11 points off turnovers per game. In their first four games, they were averaging 21 points off turnovers per game. So big difference there. Will Brown does hockey line change here, bringing four new players in, including Mitch Darty for the first time. The freshman from Acton, Mass. Another one that we weren't sure whether he was going to get playing time or not due to injury. So we, we've seen a lot of pieces that have not been playing recently for Albany due to injury. Kind of back and a little bit closer to healthy tonight. As Hamilton makes two free throws. DC back within one. Romani Hansen, the senior in for the... Oh, long rebound out for Jay Heath. In stride, Kamari Williams off the mark. An offensive rebound from the rebounding machine that is Stefan Mitchell. Got his another one. Stefan Mitchell already with four rebounds. A couple of steals mixed in, five points. Once again, stuffing the stat sheet. Trying for an assist here. Heath a little bit short. That's a three-chance possession for Boston College with no points out of it. Pull-up jumper. No good. Anthony Rizzuto has knocked down one so far. Extra pass for Rishwain, driving the baseline. Floater will send Rishwain to the line. Boston College down by one, but it You're so annoying, get off me. Hey girls, please, can you come yeah. on? Here, me. just watch something there and play a game. We're here. And once again, just making those hustle plays and converting them into offense. The Eagles are best when, when they are in the full court, and that's something they really lost in those four losses, so I think a lot of focus going into the Notre Dame game on Saturday was, hey, let's go back out to what's made us successful so far, and that is the real intense effort to defense. Four steals so far, eight points off turnovers for Boston College to this point. Rishwain at the free throw line to tie the game once again at 24. Rishwain, the freshman, is a McDonald's All-American nominee last year from Sherman Oaks, California. One of two at the line, two of four at the line for the game. And then a foul is called on the rebound attempt against Luka Kroljevic. That is the seventh foul on Boston College. Both teams with seven fouls, so a lot of free throws here in the final 6.53 of this first half to come. And Albany, very good free throw shooting team, 72.3%. 
best in America East and seventh nationally. Brent Hank, one of the few who struggles, four of 12, limited sample size, but looked pretty good right there. <laughs> Hank starting his seventh game in a row today after coming off the bench in the first three. The sophomore from Port Lincoln, Australia. And he's got two free throws. So Albany the lead once again. They have made all six of its free throw attempts tonight. Kraljevic out there is a big, again with the injury to Nick Popovich missing his second game in a row. Amari Williams with the right hand was blocked. Eagles get it back. Rishwain steps into a triple. Rishwain with eight points. And that was a great defensive effort by U Albany. Got a nice block against Williams, but I love that Williams did not let up on that play. He stayed with it, gave it off to Rishwain, and he was just in his momentum. Hits the three. This is a bit of an odd lineup for Boston College with Thornton out with two fouls right now. Felder out with two fouls. Long ball. Healy to match. Cameron Healy with 11 points already. He's got at least 10 points in now 10 of his first 11 games this year. And you just cannot lose him when you're on the offensive end. Mitchell long pass to Rishwain. Kept alive. Jay Heath. With seven to shoot. Fastball for Mitchell. That's too strong on the three. Made one from the corner earlier. Two point lead, U Albany. Healy is open again. That time it didn't go, but that was two open looks for the best offensive weapon that U Albany brings to the floor today. And that was a great job by Williams and hitting Richwing 4 3. Then you, Albany, you cannot afford to lose Healy on the offensive end. Any open shot that he's going to take, you have to expect he's going to make that. So the Eagles bring Derek Thornton back into the game along with Jared Hamilton, but Thornton playing with two fouls here. What do you think down by two here in the first half? I think he has to play smart. This is where your experience as one of the veteran leaders on this team, they need him in the game. And so you just have to be smart and can't fail. He got around, but the three was well short. C.J. Felder, who's also back in the game with two fouls. This goes out of bounds. So Jim Christian putting a lot of trust in Felder and Thornton here. Coach will use the timeout with nine to shoot. Four fifty. And if you're the Eagles, you have to know that screen's coming. You have to communicate on it. And you cannot afford to let him come off that screen open. And you know, when he has the ball in his hands, he's looking to score. You have to have your hands up. That takes a lot of communication off of those ball screens that are coming and, and off of that transition buckets that they've afforded him. Three three-pointers for Healy. Rishwain from a long three rattled off. For Healy now, by the way, with those threes, that's 43 consecutive games, all 43 games in his career that he has made a three-pointer. That is the fourth longest active streak in the country. And he set the single season record at U Albany last season by making 104 three-pointers in his freshman campaign. Traveling violation called here against Albany. Yeah, Healy, All-America East, third team, All-Rookie team. He was the runner-up for the America East Rookie of the Year a season ago. And he's just got a great stroke from three. Will Brown in our call said he's really feels like he's a top 10 shooter in the country. They've had to put a lot on him because yeah. of some of the struggles elsewhere and injuries, but he has continued to make them despite it. Eagles, another offensive rebound sequence, and the three-pointer is no good. Mitchell fighting for another rebound, but this goes out of bounds. I think this is one here where the Eagles are now one of its last 10 from the floor. They're getting offensive rebounds, Kerry, but they're not converting on the second or the third no. chance. They're not only getting good offensive rebounds, they're making great extra passes. They just haven't been able to convert the, those into points. Seven offensive boards already, but just six second chance points so far. Scoring drought of over two minutes for BC. Albany up by two. Healy kicks to Clark.
kept his dribble for the DeMatha grad. Got by Hamilton to the bucket on a pass. Time to shoot for Hutchison, but he ended up short. And a shot clock violation takes us to another timeout. You Albany up by two here in Chester. When we're looking for a roommate, Started with one player, Luke Devlin, and then it's kind of carried on. Someone recruiting someone, recruiting someone. At Boston College, we've seen it because the BC women's basketball team has a couple of Aussies on there. 